Hi guys, it's Eric with the Film Photography Channel. Let's take a look at the Agfa Super Isolette. Okay, so this is the Agfa Super Isolette. It is the crown jewel in the Isolette line. Although it's really nothing like the previous Isolettes, um, which I think ran Isolette 1, 2, and 3, and then the Super was the final uh, version of it. As you guys know, I love folding cameras. This is the very first folding camera that I ever bought, and this is what kind of made me fall in love with the form factor. The pictures out of this thing are just absolutely ridiculous and how beautiful they are and um, how you get this really unique 3D pop. I mean, uh, I guess it's due to the size of the negative. The negative is so big, and I'll show you what that looks like. It's a 6x6 negative, kind of like your Instagram format. See how big that negative is there? All that is your picture there. And given that it's so big, it gives you a nice shallow depth of field. So you can actually take a photo of somebody like 10, 12, 15 feet away, and the background behind them will still be out of focus, just enough to give them a, like a little extra pop, just to make them stand out from the background, where um, pretty much every other smaller format camera will have everything in focus you know you're the guy your your subject's 10 feet away so everything from that subject beyond behind will also be in focus so you don't you don't really get that 3d pop from smaller formats like you do from these now i've had several and i still have several um of these folding cameras i absolutely love this form factor they're super convenient super easy to use fold them get them out of the way when you're ready to take a picture on this one you just hit the button there and this lens fully deploys in place some of these other cameras and I'll show you my uh, my Vesa 2 for example when you open up the Vesa 2 see it doesn't open up all the way you got to kind of help it out a little bit um, and it might if you do it this way here let's try that Nah, still not yeah you got to help it out a little bit um, the uh, this is a regular isolate this is the one that was sold um, before you know it opens up with no problem the problem with this camera is uh, the grease inside the focusing uh, mechanism is, is just seized and the focusing was actually frozen and I tried to, to loosen it and ended up breaking the, the focusing so it doesn't focus. I believe it's stuck in infinity so it's still usable. And But the lens and, and you know, this camera is nowhere near in the same category as the, uh, as the Super Isolette. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller. But beyond that, the, the optics are nowhere near as good. Um, it doesn't have a coupled rangefinder, so you got to kind of focus, um, uh, do zone focusing, or in the case of this one, since it's broken, you're just focusing at infinity. And just to round out my folder collection, as you can see, I've got my, my uh, Kodak Retina 2 small C, um, which is another folding camera that I absolutely love. It is a fun camera to use as well. This one is a 35 millimeter. Okay, so so it's the tiniest of, the, of my uh, folding collection, and it's also a fun camera to use. But going back to the Super Isolette, this is the ultimate expression uh, from Agfa for the Isolette line. Now they replaced it with the it was called the Automatic 66. It came out a few years later, but they only sold that particular camera for one year, and it was actually the first aperture priority camera of any of any kind and, it, and the funny thing is the in the photo industry there wasn't another aperture priority camera that came out for I think 10 more years after Agfa released their uh, their version of an aperture priority camera but like I said um, it only was sold for one year if you can find one uh, you're talking about 2500 bucks to maybe even three grand or something like that if you can even find one like I said they only sold them for a year they only made a thousand of them so they're super hard to find the prices have gone up on these and like most film cameras, it's, it really comes down to uh, the photo quality. I believe the reason the prices have been so strong on these cameras um, is because they take such nice photos. I, this one I bought from Jurgen Krekel. Krekel? Krekel? He is a man at the Serto 6 website that uh, refurbishes these and sells these. And uh, the Serto 6 is obviously his favorite camera. He named his website after it. Um, this uh, folding camera here, the Agfa Super Isolette, I've had about eight years. Okay, and the reason that I know that is because I've got a baby picture uh, of my daughter, uh, and she's eight years old now. 
I remember taking her picture when she was born or when she was a few months old, but I've had this camera for about eight years now. Okay, so to look at the specs real quickly, this is a 75 millimeter f3.5 Solinar lens. It's a Tessa clone. It ranges in speed from one full second to one five hundredth of a second plus bulb, which is kind of like professional level territory for, you know, for the time and day that this camera was uh, produced. This camera was sold from 1953 through 1958. It was sold under this name, obviously, the Super Isolette, but it was also sold as, as an Ansco Super Speed X, I think it was, in the United States. I believe this was the German version. These cameras are, are getting harder and harder to find. I bought it, like I said, around eight years ago for about 200 250 if I remember, and I've seen them on eBay uh, as recently as today for uh, almost $700. Uh, the reason for that, I think, is um, these cameras held up really, really well. And it, it's a special camera. Let me let me just kind of go over some of the features with you. So the claim to fame for this camera was the film loading system. And I'll see if I can actually do this while I hold the camera up. And so what you do, roll this down. Let's get a little closer. Uh, these, uh, these helical movement dials there, you just kind of roll them down. And roll it back up to, to get the uh, film in place there. And like I said, this is a little tricky to do like this, but I'm going to, I'm going to try. All right. So you, and it's pretty simple though. You put the film leader tab, which is right there. The more narrow part of the film there. Okay. And all right. So the tab is in there, right? Now watch, watch just how easy this is. You see that? I mean, just no must, no fuss, especially with me holding it up like this, which is never easy. But uh, yeah, you put the, the film leader tab in there and it's already winding the film without any problem. So the little gear that's in here that's got these sharp teeth, it actually um, puts an imprint, like these not quite holes, but a pretty deep imprint inside your negatives. It obviously won't be in the picture, but but I've never seen a camera that does that to the film. It just makes these little these little holes. Uh, if you really look at your film after you develop it, you're going to see a row of, of little imprints across the top of the film. You don't have like the red window in the back like a lot of these cameras do. It's a completely sealed back. There is a film counter on top here, right? And once you start winding, this the camera will stop winding once it reaches the first frame. All right? And every subsequent frame all you do is you, you take the photo you wind and it'll stop at the at the next frame and and you can keep track there with the film counter now it's a great system in theory but unfortunately that system isn't working on this camera it it, it did work when i first got it but that gear is a little sensitive there that little pointy gear i told you about this you know this guy right here um all it really does now is it does actuate the film counter still so i can keep up um, you know, with which frame I'm on, but it won't stop the uh, film counter. I mean, I'm sorry, it won't stop the, the film advance, unfortunately. Uh, that just doesn't work anymore. Yeah, you pop the film in there, you start winding, and I just have to know when to stop. So I've, I've calculated it's about six and a quarter turns, so I just kind of keep up with the arrow here and make sure, you know, that I, I hit six and a quarter turns, and, and then I'll be at the first frame. And it's a little funny what I have to do now. Um, uh, you know, like the first frame will be like one full turn and then th that'll be true of the second and third frames, you know, cause this thing will never, it won't stop between frames like it was designed to do. So I, I figured out a little formula where like the first frames are like one full turn and the subsequent frames are a little bit less than that and then less than that. And I got pretty decent results. I got 11 or so, and sometimes even 12 photos like you're supposed to from a roll, but yeah, that uh, that great system that Agfa designed is just not working on this camera. Because every other camera I've got in my collection works as designed. This one, unfortunately, doesn't, and I can't really. It's not really worth repairing. It'd be a three or four hundred dollar repair on a five or six hundred dollar camera. So, uh, you know, I'm fine with just kind of figuring out how many turns to make. The viewfinder, as you look through here, is pretty typical. These cameras always had these tiny little peephole looking viewfinder windows. 
but when you actually look through there you got a nice square viewfinder that's bright enough and the focusing is so precise uh, in this dimly relatively dimly lit room outside you know uh, there's absolutely no problem focusing and it's uh, it's a little unusual to have a round rangefinder patch usually they're a rectangle or a square or a diamond uh, this is the only camera I've seen that's got a round one and not to say that there aren't many more out there um, I, I told you about the the heli helical motion uh, film release uh, dials at the bottom here tripod tripod socket um, this is the the release notch right there and um, this by far is my favorite and it's my first folder too it's the, the first folding camera that I've had the, that I that I've ever bought and I do really enjoy using it it's it's just um, it's just fun to use, you know, and you're walking around with this thing and, and people start talking to you and they're like, oh, what is that? You know, they, a lot of people have never seen these. I don't know why this form factor went away. This is a really smart way to design a camera. I mean, you get this huge negative, about it's four or five, six times the size of a 35 millimeter negative, but you get to carry it around like this. There is no DSLR that you can just throw in your pocket or SLR for that matter for us film folks. There, there's nothing that you can throw in your pocket that's going to be as nice as, as this, and certainly that's going to give you these big, huge uh, negatives, big, huge frames. So when you go to take a photo, I'll, let's, let's get in close and personal with this lens here. All right, when you go to take a photo with this camera, a uh, couple things. It's, not, it's nothing that will really slow you down, but just some stuff you need to know. All right, so you see the, the shutter speeds there. Okay, and I showed you earlier how you set the shutter speed. Okay, um, once you have your shutter speed set, make sure you cock the shutter first. Okay, and once the shutter's cocked, don't mess around with the shutter speeds anymore. Okay, once the cut, once the shutter is cocked, then that's it, and then then you're all set to take the photo. But um, it uh, it tells you in the instruction manual, and I've read more than once that um, you don't mess around with the you don't go cocking the shutter and then changing the shutter speed. Okay, that's just a thing with these, and not just with this camera, but with uh, pretty much with all of them that have this kind of uh, uh, leaf shutter in there. All right, you got your film, film advance here, film counter window there, shutter release, cold shoe. Uh, this is the, the button that uh, deploys the, the lens. Okay, it pops the lens down, and this is nothing but your film reminder window it doesn't serve any other purpose it seems like a lot to you know that they put a lot into just to remind you what kind of film you got you pull out on it and change there here's the tiny little peephole rangefinder which is not bad uh you know nice fit and finish nice materials all the way around now these bellows are really really good bellows they're known for not leaking lights uh not having light leaks where a lot of these uh, bellows especially at this age they develop these little pinholes just from you know the opening and closing at some point they they develop these pinholes that will end up affecting your photos this camera is completely light tight it's been uh cla'd um by jurgen my buddy that uh, that i bought this camera from he's worked on it and he's worked on my bessa too This thing is a breeze to focus. It's just pretty simple. You you focus it, you frame your photo, you make sure you've got your, your lens or your shutter cocked, and then you're ready to go. And the shutter release is right here. And of course, there's a cable release too for the old fashioned screw in cable releases. And uh, yeah, and these uh, these shutters were, were really more like, um, like clockwork type of uh, mechanisms. They sound like the gears that you would, you know, uh, hear like grinding away in a, in a, you know, like a nice old school clock. I'll let you hear some of that. All right. Um, I'll let you hear that. All right. This is the one full second. You set the shutter speed, cock the shutter, and then you can see it, which is, it's pretty typical that you've got that, that grinding gear going on in there. Um, that's that's just how these cameras were designed. This is literally like a clock mechanism that's inside here that determines the speed. Uh, again, cock the shutter. This is one quarter second, and it's a smooth, quiet, 
leaf shutter. There's zero vibration. Uh, so it really makes it easy to take photos at slower shutter speeds. One fifteenth, you can hand hold this with no problem. What you see there, that's the leaf shutter. That's not the aperture blades, okay? That's the shutter itself. And the aperture blades are going to appear back here. Let's see if we can get a good shot of the aperture blades opening and closing. Hold on. You see that? Those are the aperture blades that are behind the leaf shutter. Now this thing is marked to an F22, but my understanding that uh, it actually closes down to F45. Um, it, although it's not marked for such. But you see the, there's the aperture blades. And that's what it looks like from the perspective of the film. Let's see here. All right, if you take a look at this lens here, like I said, it's a, uh, it's, they call it a Solinar, which is a Tessa, Tessar clone. And as you can see, the, the beautiful engravings here on the chrome rings, you press this button here to to uh, free the aperture ring so you can move it. But like a lot of cameras of its day, let's say you set the aperture right there and you want to set the shutter speed to say 1 500th. You see how the, the rings move together? If you want to set the shutter to 1 500th, hold this down, move the shutter speed by itself. There you go, it moves, it moves freely by itself to 1 500th. And then you can set your aperture to whatever aperture you want. Let's say that this is a correct exposure value, 1 500 at f8. It'll be the equivalent to when you move them together. Come on, guy. All right, it'd be the same as 1 1 25th at, what is that, f16 or so, you know, or. You know, you you get it. The the two the, the once the two are, are set together, you've got an exposure value determined, and you know any of the corresponding values will will be a, the correct exposure. So that's just a a smart way to to not have to continually t uh, keep taking meter readings. All right, um, right here, this is your focusing tab, and let's see if you can see the. Yeah, you see the lens going in and out there. Okay, and a couple other things going on up here. This is your PC sync slot where you can use a modern flash as long as that flash has a, uh, you can uh, plug that flash into it with a PC cable. This camera will sync flash all, all the way from one second to one five hundredth because it's a, uh, a leaf shutter. And here are your different type of flash settings. The M X or, or X is your you know like a your modern flash and this V setting for the later model isolates they this V is a self timer so what you do is you cock the shutter first and then you push this up to the V setting and this isn't working very well but uh, you hit you go ahead and press the shutter. And you can barely hear those gears grinding there, and you can possibly see the this tab moving a little bit. But when it finishes, it's uh, yeah, you, you can barely hear it. Once it finishes, it it will take the photo. So the self timer is still working on this camera, but just barely. I, I forgot it even had a self timer. I never use it uh, in that way. But uh, actuating. All right, and there it is. You probably couldn't see it move because it was a faster shutter speed. But the normal setting, you want to just keep it on X. If I ever, you know, use a flash, and I think I have. I actually think I used a wireless system uh, with this before, where I plugged the flash the flash trigger into uh, the PC sync slot, and then just did an off camera flash. But I want to show show you guys some photos taken with this camera. That's probably the best way to make the point of just how good this camera is, is really at the end of the day is the photos. Now, I don't keep cameras um, just to, you know, just to put them on the shelf. If I buy a camera and I'm not, you know, crazy about how it renders photos or, or how 
much fun it is to use, I don't keep them. I, I'll flip them, you know, turn around and sell them on eBay or, or what have you. But this one, the fact that I've had this camera over eight years should tell you just how good it is. Okay, guys, so this is the Agfa Super Isolette. Best of the best. If you can find one, I'd get one. Thanks. Thanks.